Hey again, everyone. Time for some more squad leader. Yesterday, or the day before, I talked about the guards counterattack. Scenario one from uh, from the squad leader game system, and there's all the pieces back in play. Today, we're going to talk about the tractor works. Just like yesterday, we talked about setup, game turn one, uh, rules, stuff like that, and just to try to get through and just. Uh, Maybe hopefully point out some of the unique aspects of the game system as we go through it. So let's have a look at the game. As before, the game card gives us the information we need. We can see it's in Stalingrad, same day as the guards counterattack. Rules introduced and the victory conditions. Again, the most important part of any scenario card. Different information here, you can see there's a sequential setup, so you have to read the details down below. And some special rules. And there they are right there. So we have to learn about smoke, uh, smoke laying capacity and learn about uh, fanaticism. And we do have some uh, variations, optional upon agreement of both players. All right, without further ado, let's have a look at some of the new rules. Here we are. Rules sections 22 to 26. We learn about flamethrowers, demolition charges, smoke, concealment, and fanaticism. That's it. All this can be found on this one page, page number eight in the fourth edition, plus a paragraph on page nine. Once you get through that, then we're ready to play. Let's have a look at the setup. Here's the terrain over which we're going to be fighting. That building in the center with all those target markers on it, that is the objective building. That is the tractor works, 1x3. And as it says in the rules, the side that ends the game with undisputed control of at least six hexes of that tractor works wins. And then it gets into the details of it. It also said if neither side has eight hexes, it is a draw. Okay, looking at the terrain, there's nothing new compared to the previous game. Note, however, that we still have some single level buildings, some that are multi-story here and here, the tractor works themselves, this one, and of course over here. The rest are all single level, the same height as all the trees around them. Mix of stone and wood buildings, trees, roads, that's about it. All right, now the specifics of the setup. This mob here is in the initial setup and all of them fit into that building. We have a total of 12 447 squads. We have three light machine guns, two medium and a heavy. You can see them right here. And for all that, we have one leader, a nine minus two. Knowing that his negative two could be helped to direct fire attacks and could also be used to rally broken units, given the importance of that building, given that you're on defense, it's probably best if you use that guy to rally your broken units. Although I've some, seen some people use them in an offensive manner quite well. So let's look at all the concealment counters because we have a number of them. 18 of them. Six in those piles and then a six laid out. Basically what you do, without getting into the rules, you can read them yourself, but you place all your guys on the ground and then you can place these things. And the thing about them is you can have dummy stacks. You can have, well, if you have just one, people know it's dummy, but if you have two or more in a stack, people don't know what's under there. Basically, if they do a morale check, if they move, then when fires, etc., then you're gonna lose concealment. So let's place these guys on the board. Here's the actual defense before I put on any concealment counters. Starting in the center, the 9 negative 2 is in that hex by himself. Any of the adjacent hexes can route when it's broken into him. And the idea with that is that they can rally back and go straight out without having to worry about overstacking. Starting at the top and working the way down, there's a single 4-7 four, four, in each hex. Three of them with the light machine guns. We'll leave one guy here. Two four four sevens here, and then the three three hexes. They have two four four sevens and medium, heavy, and medium in those hexes. You'll see that they're quite strong facing this way. 
the relief forces coming in and the aim behind that is this firepower here can help those forces by bringing fire to bear in the center here and perhaps here. All right, let's conceal these guys. The concealment is complete. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but every hex has the same number of uh, counters in it, all topped with a uh, concealment counter, except for the center one. I remember that's the nine down two. The idea being that the enemy has no clue what's anywhere. There's nothing tipped. No hex is bigger than the other, except for the one in the middle that they can't reach. Hopefully they get the assumption that, oh, that's where his reserves are. So once I crack the other shell, I'll be able to get to him. Now remember, these could be all empty hexes if uh, if you want. And I've seen some of these hexes be all empty. The uh, German wastes firepower on them. All right, let's carry on with the setup. Germans are next. Here's the setup before putting any concealment counters down. You'll notice straight away R7 is left empty. What I've done is put a couple of squads in the middle building. Their job there is to simply die in place. Down below, I have a medium machine gun, a squad, light machine gun, and a squad with an 8 minus 1 liter. Firepower over here and up this road. Up top here, 4, 6, 7 in each hex. One light machine gun, two light machine guns over here. Get some fire across the road for a potential firepower of a whole lot. We're looking at, uh, well, they can split the fire up many ways. And here we have the 9, negative 2, medium machine gun, and a squad. Again, they can fire cross over here there they can shoot over this building they can hit all sorts of spots down here now having seen it like that let's conceal them straight away you'll notice that R7 has been concealed with dummies the idea being that it'll waste him some time as he goes there the rest of them are pretty evenly spaced in terms of uh, how many they have for example here there's two concealment counters on top there to hide what they have so it's one of the things you should probably do when you're concealment counters is try to get evenly height of stacks so you can uh, not make it so obvious what you have in each. All right, let's get the rest of the Germans set up. Next up is Kampftruppe Tienum. Three leaders for six troops, three light machine guns and a heavy. Quite a powerful force with lots of leadership. What I've marked over here are the buildings that they're in, that they can set up in, noting that the two buildings up front here and here are multi-level. So for example, guys in this building can see over, with some restrictions, these buildings here and bring some fire to pair way across over here. That's important as I show you next for their setup. Let's see what I do. Kaufgruppatinum has now been set up and this is what they have. Start up here nice and easy, a four, six, seven in each hex here with an eight minus zero across the way there. His role is to simply rally troops and not to get under fire. The 467s up front are going to be used later. You'll see to strip concealment. The main force down here, I have in here two light machine guns, a squad, and the 9 negative 1. Heavy machine gun, 467, and the 10 negative 2. Their job is not to shoot at the main building, but rather to interdict the force that you're going to see along here to come in to try to draw, try to help these guys block as long as possible. As you can see from here, they have no influence up north. That's key when we look at the next deployment, which we'll look at now. So here we are looking at Company A Assault Engineer Battalion 50. Quite a crew, including the cocked leader here, but the 10 negative three, the 838s, you got yourselves uh, two light machine guns, you have four of those uh, demo charges, and you have two of the flamethrowers. Very, very impressive. God, th those are the guys that are going to use to clear that building. All right, that's what they set up. You can see they got two buildings that are the same as these guys here, and you have one way up at the top. Remember I said there's very little influence across the top. Watch what I do when I set up. As you can see that my placement of these guys here has been subtle as a sledgehammer. Starting up front, I have 838 each with a flamethrower up front to face across the building. Behind there, there's an 838. I'll put him as a, as a depth for the attack. He's got the demo charge as well. Up there, we have three 838s. We have three demo charges and we have two light machine guns. 
Not counted are the, huh, not wire, smoke. Smoke counters, they get a total of six, as you recall. All right, let's finish the setup and look at what the Russians have. Remember how in scenario one, the guards, there were 12 units that could be spread over four hexes, so three units per hex? That's exactly what you got here. Except instead of 12, you have 27. And you have, <laughs> you have a total of nine, or uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times three, yeah, 27 guys. Now, the only uh, leadership, or sorry, the decision points are where to put your leaders. I put NATO back here out of line of sight, again, to rally guys. Another one in the next building here, out of line of sight. Up top, in this hex, I put all the light machine guns, or two of them, and a couple over here as well. Just verify. Yes, I did. With a 9, negative 1. Planet attack here is simple. For the Russians... Guys up here are going to try to get through this building and into and reinforce the tractor works. The Germans, well, they have two fold plan. They're going to try to block and they will interdict these forces as they try to come across. That's the point up around here is where it's going to be difficult. So the attacking elements, the guards, or sorry, the uh, engineers here, are going to try to get up and around and hit the building and push them south. Push them into the teeth of the fire here. And if they're able to get up into that corner of the building, then they can actually help these guys across here. That's the plan anyway. All right, let's get this game underway. Unlike the previous game, we're not really sure who starts first. Roll one die to determine who moves first. You can make it odds is one, evens is the other, whatever. But I'll just simply say one, two, or three will be Russian. will go first. Four, five, or six will be German. We'll go first. And we have a four. Looks like the Germans are going to attack. Let's set up now for the prep fire phase. It is the German prep fire phase and only two actions are happening. The very first one is the engineer squad up here place smoke in the adjacent hex. Right there. He is still able to fire. He is still able to move. He is not committed to prep firing, but that smoke is now placed. As a reminder, it's the first thing you have to do, and also any fire that goes through that hex, any target, has an extra die added to the dice roll. Not a dice roll modifier, but you roll a third die. The other option here, or the other fire here, is simply what the uh, German is going to do, and actually I noticed he placed it in the wrong target hex. He's not shooting up there, no. He is shooting right there. So what's happening here is the guy, the 10 negative 2, is firing to try to take and whittle away the numbers on the left. And he's just going to fire at this guy. So it's like 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 hexes away. The heavy machine gun and the 4, 6, 7, which will be halved to 2, for power power of 8. DRM of plus 1. Plus 3 for the building, minus 2 for the leader. Let's roll the dice. Roll the five. Five plus one in the eight column is a six. That means they will have to undergo a plus one morale check. Let's see what happens. There's our three guys. Each guy gets a plus one morale check. First guy. Five plus one, or sorry, six plus one is seven. He is good. Next one. Four. Four plus one is five. He is good as well. And the next one. Not so lucky. Eight. Eight plus one is nine. He breaks. Let's apply the result. One down, 26 to go. But it is a long game of eight turns. That's terribly long. All right, let's get on to the movement phase. Before I move, you're probably wondering why the other guys haven't fired. Well, basically, they're holding the fire to see what gets stripped for concealment on the other side of that building because they can fire in the advanced fire phase without penalty. Also, if there is a unit adjacent to you at the end of the movement phase, at the end of the movement phase, then you lose your concealment. So what's happening here is they're going to send some guys out. They're going to, you know, uh, cause those guys over here to, to shoot or maybe just lose their concealment. And that'll be that for them. All right, let's get into the movement. The first part of the movement is quite simple. Four, six, sevens out of the building came into the street. This guy into the wide open. They're saving their smoke for later. 
But this guy's smoke isn't really for that 467. He's taking advantage of it because these guys are going to try to come around through here, somewhere through here. All right, let's get, uh, let's get the other guys moving. Up here we have the 10 negative 3. He gives two extra movement factors for these guys. So they're simply going to move along like this. They're there for two, four, and six. Pretty simple. That's it for the movement phase. Let's get on to the defensive fire phase. This guy here in the top corner is going to lose his concealment to him anyway. So he's going to shoot at this whole stack as they go through that hex there. Because he is not covered by the smoke and that's the best chance that the Russian has against that hex. We have a 447 and a 10, or sorry, a 2 negative 6, sorry, 2 dash 6 light machine gun firing at them. Normal range. So we're looking at a firepower of 6. And the DRM is plus 1 for the woods. Let's see what happens. I rolled a 10. 10 on the 6, plus 1 is 11. As we see here, is no effect. Let's carry on with the defensive fire phase. Down on the corner here with the 447 and the light machine gun to fire at the hapless 467 in the street. He moved in the open. That's going to be a 6, double the 12, minus 2. And the dice say what? I rolled a 6, minus 2 is a 4. A 4 on the 12 is a 3 morale check. Let's apply the results. There's our fella. Let's check out what happens. Six plus three is nine. It is German for no, which means he fails his morale check. Let's apply the results. There he is, marked with desperation morale. And you'll also notice the light machine gun up here. I rolled a 10. 10 on the light machine gun is the breakdown number. So 10 or above, and it breaks. So firing at the guys in the woods caused him to jam his weapon, run out of, of ammo, whatever. He has a chance to repair it. All right, let's carry on with the defensive fire phase. In the center hex, the 447 is going to fire at the 467 at point blank. Firepower is going to be 8. The DRMs are as follows. Minus 2 for moving in in the open. It's an open ground hex. But it'll be plus 1 die for the dice roll modifier, or added on to the whole dice. In effect, 3 dice with a negative 2 from the whole result. Let's apply the results. So I'll just roll the one die another time. So we have seven plus <laughs> seven and six. We're at 13. 13 minus two is 11. 11 on the eight column is a miss. Sadly, he's not affected that guy there. And the smoke has helped that, that guy survive. Let's carry on with the defensive fire phase because there's a lot more for them to shoot. Up top here, these two hexes here are going to form a multi-hex multi fire group and they're going to shoot across the street here. Remembering these guys are concealed. Correction, over here. They're hitting this one because there is a taller stack and sometimes it's hit better to hit a taller stack because maybe you're going after bigger guys. As I move these guys out of the way, Sometimes concealment counters fall and you have to be careful. <laughs> All right. So together they have a total of 32 firepower factors. We're looking at a total of six 447s, 6 and 4 is 24, plus four light machine guns. Each one's two plus another eight. So there you go, 32. But divided by two is 16. 16 up three on that hex right there. Let's roll the dice. I rolled a six. 6 plus 3 is a 9. 9 on the 16 column is a 1 morale check. That will strip concealment. Let's apply the results. Here's a reminder of what's in the stack. It was a plus 1 morale check. As a reminder, there was a leader in one of those hexes. But the leadership modifier has to be applied in every hex. He can only apply it in his own hex. So therefore, it was just a plus 3. In any event, we have... The 467, two light machine guns, and the concealment is stripped. Plus one morale check. Roll the seven. Seven plus one is eight. He just breaks. The remainder of the attacks are pretty, what I'll call, vanilla. These two stacks here are going to fire a group onto there, so it's going to be a 12 plus three. 
Oh my, <laughs> vanilla my butt. I rolled a two. Two plus three is five. Five on the 12th column is, as you can see here, is a plus two morale check. So we go here, strip concealment. Uh oh, there's one. Oh, there is a guy there. Roll the dice. Five plus two is seven. All right, they survive, but the concealment is gone. Opens up for this guy. He can fire at him. It's not halved, so it's three, four, four, sevens. Onto him is a 12 plus three. <laughs> this time it just misses seven. Plus three is 10, no effect. Finally, down here, we have a total of five guys. That's 10 divided by two is eight. Because it's half, they're gonna fire eight plus three on him to try to stick his concealment. Yee! Good thing it wasn't machine guns. No effect. That will do it for the defensive fire phase. Let's go to the advancing fire phase. First up is the kill stack. Up here, we have three 838s. There's the light machine guns, they're not gonna shoot. And they're gonna fire here. It's 24 divided by two is 12. 12 plus three for the building, minus three for the leader, is a 12 flat attack into a stone building. Now you can see how powerful this guy is. Roll the nine. Crappy roll, but that still results in a morale check. Now remember, these guys are fanatic. In essence, their morale is at eight. So he has an eight or less and he passes. Ha! Roll the nine. He breaks. Let's apply the result. Got the top corner. Let's go for the bottom. From right here, two of the light machine guns and a four, 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 six, seven, and the nine negative one will fire into there for a total of eight plus three for the building, minus one for the leader. So an eight plus two. I rolled a nine, another nine, that's terrible. Anyway, no effect. Carry on the advanced fire phase. Normally I don't do this, but for this purpose, the flamethrower will fire at him. Higher power of 20. As I said, fire power of 20. Point to note, it's always 20. It's not 20, it's not 40 if it's point blank, but it's two hexes and nothing further. The only time it's halved or modified is if they're concealed. There's no train effect modifier, so this is a 20 DRM zero attack. Let's see what happens. I rolled a seven. Seven on the 20 is a two. Because they're a uh, fanatic, we'll call it a one. So it's a one morale check on our lads here. So basically they need a six or less for them to pass. They rolled a seven, they fail. Let's apply that result. It's not necessary, but the squad could fire into there as well. As a rule of thumb, I don't shoot at broken Russians. They can go berserk. So this guy's gonna fire through here. Notice the smoke does not affect it. It's only if they're halved. So it's gonna be a 20 flat on him. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. I rolled a six. Six on the 20 is a three. We'll call it a two because they're fanatic. So it's a two morale check. This guy basically has to roll a five or less. I roll the dice, he gets a five, but he also got a four, so he failed. Let's apply the result. So it's the end of the advancing fire phase. And we can see the Russian, the Red Germans have no idea, no reason to fire anymore. They can shoot a four plus three, but that's not gonna result in anything over here. So he decides, the you know, they've already cracked this side of the building. Still got a long way to go, but at least they might get a toehold. So now it's the route phase. Let's clear the counters and conduct the routes. This is the end of the route phase. Broken unit here just simply went one hex to there and stopped. It wasn't going any closer to anybody. Unit in the street here went back into the hex here and stopped. Again, not going closer to anybody and seeking, uh, seeking cover. These two units here broke into this hex here. They forgot their kick me sign. There you go. And now they're in the middle. This guy here went back one hex to there. So the route phase is done. Now for the German advance phase. It is now the end of the German advance phase. 
On the left, the only thing that happened is the 467 that was stripped concealment went back a hex, so he doesn't face as much firepower. The remainder stayed the same. Here's where the big thing happened. The guy that survived the smoke jumped into the building hex here, so he's going to be adjacent to a bunch of guys that will end up stripping concealment. I'll do that at the end of this phase. But just wanted to show that the 838s jumped out in the street from here. He has two of the satchel charges. He has one. 838 and a 10th negative three with a two light machine gun so they can shoot across here. Still not to where they want to go. Flamethrowers come in the street. So basically these hexes here are point blank to a bunch of guys out in the street. He's a bit exposed to him, but again, if he shoots, then he's going to get shot back. Basically what they're trying to do is force the Russian's hand. Let's remove concealments and end the phase. Not a bad turn for the Germans. They stripped uh, five hexes of concealments all through here. And they're rushing in with, with only the one broken casually here and another one over there. That's actually probably the more concerning because these guys here, they can get across the street here and into this building before the Germans can come down and try to stop them. Anyway, so that's the end of the first turn. Next, we're going to talk about the streets of Stalingrad, combining SL1 and SL2. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. And now we see the next group to be set up, Kampfgruppe Staller. The buildings they go into are marked as such, with the top one being a multi-hex one. Uh, you know, there's three or more, so they build multi-story, so they can shoot uh, over some of those smaller buildings. But you can see here that they have a smaller force, a lot, probably about the same number of machine guns as the other crew that was in the building, maybe just one shy of them. And they do have some concealment counters for 12. Their job basically will be to stop a stem of Russians that will be coming in from over here. All right, let's set these guys up and have a look at how their defense will go.